Hello everybody, welcome to Log High School. Hi. Uh, today we're going to do a quick preview of what it means to be to find uh, absolute extrema, section 3.1 of the Larson book. Here we go, finding absolute extrema. Before I teach you how to find absolute extrema, I need to tell you what an absolute extrema is. An absolute extrema is the name we give for the highest output value a function achieves, in this case, on the interval from A to B. If you were to look at these uh, output values, at what input value does the function achieve its highest output value? B. Where, guys? B, B, sir, B. At B. At B, it is the highest output value. We say that this output value is the absolute maximum. Ladies and gentlemen, at what input value do we achieve the uh, minimum? Absolute C. minimum. C, C two. sir. C, two. Deuces. Right here. Now, the interesting thing is that we have two different types of what we call extrema. Absolute max and mins and relative max and mins. The absolute max was here because that's the highest output uh, on this interval. The absolute min is here because that's the lowest output on the interval. But in this area, we have a special name. That is called a relative max because in this little area, C1 is the highest, gives us the highest output value. Here we have a relative minimum because C2 is the lowest output value in this area as well. But in this case, we have an absolute max at B, and we have a relative max at C1. Now, C1 is not the absolute max, but it is a relative max. C2, though, is a relative minimum, but it also is the absolute minimum of the entire function. Let's try another one. Let's look at this function. Ladies and gentlemen, at what input value do we have the highest output value on this interval? C. At C. Where do we have the lowest output value? B. B. At B. Now in this case, we have our absolute minimum at B, absolute maximum at C, and C also happens to be a relative maximum. Let's look at the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, where do we achieve our absolute max here? C. C. At C. This, even though it's a sharp turn, is considered both a relative maximum and absolute maximum because it is the highest output value on the interval. Now, the lowest output value, the absolute minimum, should be here and here. But since we have open dots, the output values don't exist there, and there is no absolute minimum here. So in this case, we have no absolute minimum. Okay, next example of this function h of x on the interval from a to c. The absolute maximum should have been here, but there's no output value there, so we see that there's no max. The absolute minimum should have been here, but there's no output value there, so we say there is no minimum, no absolute minimum. Next one, function g on the interval from a to b. Ladies and gentlemen, where does this function g achieve its absolute max? C. C. At c. If you notice at c, c, the output value is not here, it is here, and it is the highest output value on the interval. How about the absolute min, ladies and gentlemen? A. Hey. Hey. At A, we have the lowest output value right here. That would be the absolute minimum. And here's our next example, example with our function G on the interval from A to B. Looking at this carefully, we have a point here, and the graph continues down here at the bottom. The absolute max happens here at A, because that's where the highest output value is. The absolute min happens here at C, which is also a relative min. In this area, it's the lowest point. This is also considered a relative min but also the absolute min on the whole interval. Now, analytically, we could actually find the absolute maximums and absolute, absolute minimums on an interval. Here are the steps to finding the absolute extrema on an interval. There are four steps. If you want, you could pause the video right here so you can look at these four steps. Why don't you zoom in a little bit so people can see the four steps. And again, pause the video if you need to copy them down. Our first example for finding absolute max and absolute mins is if of f of x equals x cubed minus 3x plus 1 on the interval from 0 to 3. The steps go as follows. We take a derivative to find what we call the critical numbers. And critical numbers are the values for x that make the derivative equal to 0 or the derivative undefined. So we take a derivative, set it equal to 0, and we solve for x. In this case, when we solve for x, we get two solutions, x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Then what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the following input values into our function to compare their output values. We're going to plug in the endpoints, 0 and 3, 
and we're going to plug in any critical number that is in the interval from 0 to 3. In this case, the critical number negative 1 is not going to be used because it's not in the interval from 0 to 3. So we're going to plug in 0 into the function. We're going to plug in 1 into the function, the critical number, and 3 into the function, the other endpoint. Again, we plug the endpoints and the one critical number in between the interval that we're uh, talking about here. If we plug in 0 into the function, the output value is 1. If you plug in 1 into the function, the output value is negative 1. And if you plug in 3 into the function, the output value was 19. Just by comparing the output values, you can see where the absolute max is and where is the absolute min. The absolute max is at 19, excuse me, is at 3. The value of the absolute max is 19. This is what we call the absolute max. And where do we find the absolute min? Well, we look at the lowest output value. The lowest output value is negative 1. This is what we call the absolute min. Where does the absolute min happen? At 1. The absolute min happens at 1. Now, if we take a look at the graph, here's the graph of the function on the interval from 0 all the way to 3. Notice that the output value at 1 is negative 1. That's the lowest output value. And at 3, we achieve our highest output value, which is at 19. Let's look at our next example. Again, the process goes, take a derivative, set it equal to zero to find your critical numbers, plug in your critical numbers and endpoints into the original function, and compare the outputs. Let's take a look, take a derivative. We end up with 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Setting it equal to zero, we get zero is equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. This is a quadratic equation. We have two different ways to solve it, either by factoring or by the quadratic formula. In this case, factoring works out really nice. We factor out a 3. And after we factor out a 3, our factors were x, x, and minus 3, and minus 1. x minus 3 times x minus 1. Solving this equation for x, we get two values for x. x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 1. Remember, these are called our critical numbers because these are the values for x where the derivative is equal to 0. We take our endpoints and our critical numbers and plug them into the original function. Those are our endpoints, f of negative 1 and f of 4. And the input values, the critical numbers, excuse me, are 3 and 1. So we're going to plug in 1 and 3. Then we take those input values and plug them into our original function. Now, the output value at negative 1 is negative 14. The output value at 1 is 6. The output value at 3 is 2. And the output value at 4 is also 6. By looking at these values, we compare their outputs and determine where is the absolute max and the absolute min. In this case, 6 occurs twice, happens to be the absolute maximum value. Um, it occurs twice, once at 1 and once at 4. Absolute max happens twice. Now comparing the rest of the output values, we notice that negative 14 is the lowest output value. We're going to call that our absolute min, which happens at negative 1 at one of the endpoints. So if we take a look at the graph, notice that we do have the absolute min way over here on the side at the endpoint value negative 1. That's the lowest value. Comparing all of these, notice that the two that were the same were, was at 1, one of our critical numbers, and at 4, the other uh, endpoint. So we have absolute ma max value at 6, and absolute minimum value at negative 14. And that's pretty much how you find absolute extrema. Take a derivative, set it equal to 0, take your critical numbers and your endpoints, plug them into the function, and compare the output values. The highest output value is your absolute max, the lowest output value is your absolute min. That's absolute extrema. Done.